welcome back. We are, uh, I guess I'm apologizing here. We're going to, we're going to bail out a little bit on the deploying Django in production. And the, the issue with that is that as I started working through it, there are, uh, if you do it manually, there are a lot of pieces to get into place. Uh, potent, uh, I guess I'll sort of cover it briefly is uh, what I was going to do was dealt, dealt with um, deploying it on Apache 2 uh, version 2.0. And the thing about Apache 2.0 and uh, this thing called mod WSGI, which if you want to do it, it has a pretty good, uh, you can go actually out to the Django documentation. You can find a pretty good walkthrough and also out on the Apache site, it talks about how to uh, install it and, and get it turned on. But there are a lot of little version gotchas that you can run into. Um, it's very important to be sure whether you're dealing with uh, version Apache 2.2 or 2.4. <coughs> and the, um, the Python version can somewhat come into play as well. And there are a lot of, uh, like sometimes happens when you start messing around with any modification to out of the box web stuff, uh, depending on what your web server is, you can run into some permissions issues and things like that. So rather than go through a lot of time talking about configuration and things like that, I figured I'd actually shortcut a little bit uh, and move us on to some more, you know, Python and Django related stuff, which will be essentially wrapping up this series. And I'm going to get into more specific stuff focused on uh, Python and whether you want to get, if you want to get a certification in Python, we're going to actually walk through the, uh, essentially the syllabus and learning the items related to that. So for now, uh, I wanted to point out that there is this mod WSG, w, uh, WSGI that you can you can install on your server. Uh, it varies depending on what your server is, what your server operating system is. Uh, but there are some walk, some uh, plenty of tutorials to do it. Much like the other things I'm going to talk about, I highly recommend when you install it, take the easiest, most simple Hello World version of setting it up first. Walk through that and then start putting your uh, application files into it. Uh, if you try to do it all at once, it's it's much more complicated. Now, if I haven't scared you away yet, there are uh, shortcuts. There are easier ways to deal with this. Um, and I'm going to talk about four of them. Now, one we may have briefly touched on early on is that AWS has a way to build out a Django environment. If you go into their systems, if you go use ECS, there are ways that they will pre-build stuff for you. And again, what you can do is go through, build the, the most simple version, and then add your files into it. And there's, uh, there's pipelines and things like that that are related to that so that you can actually tie it into your version control and get all of that stuff automated and spin up a server. That's going to be probably easier than building something from scratch. Uh, now there are some gotchas there. You're going to have to make sure that you have been updating the requirements text file along the way, uh, which basically tells any pipeline what uh, libraries need to be loaded in as it's building out its system. So AWS has a pretty good system that you can use. Uh, one that's actually really nice that I've used in the past, actually early on when I was working with Django, is Heroku. And they have, uh, if you go out there, they've got a free, you can do free uh, hosting for your Django app. And they have actually a pretty good walkthrough. Uh, if you go in and look for uh, deploying Python and Django apps, and actually, I think if you just Google Django and Heroku, then you'll see they've got a getting started on Heroku with Python. And they'll talk about, you know, they'll walk you through getting Heroku set up and then getting Python and then working with Django and getting that set up. And there's a lot of good documentation there to build out your uh, your application, depending on how you want to want to do so. Uh, in a similar vein, there is uh, Red Hat's OpenShift. Uh, they've got very much like Heroku. They are a uh, a cloud container system, and they do have uh, some good examples. They actually have Django with a Postgres database instead of uh, MySQL, 
And that was one that I'd walked through at some point. And from what I remember, um, it's been a while, but it was also a very good example. And what you see with a lot of these is they actually have source code. So you have a, uh, like essentially a template to get started with. So you can, usually within literally minutes, you can pull that down and have a hello world running out on their cloud. And then you can start customizing it out. And that, yeah, you have to be a little bit careful because you, you don't want to just like step on setting files and things like that. But you should be able to move fairly quickly to get those pieces set up. And there is documentation if you want to, depending on your database style. Uh, most of them are going to want to do the uh, SQLite that's default. But there are ways to either, uh, in some cases, spin up a MySQL database. Or the other thing you do is you can just point to your MySQL database and just make sure that the cloud server you create has the appropriate permissions to be able to actually hit your, you know, a separate database server where your database lives. So you've got Heroku, AWS, you've got OpenShift, another one that, uh, you know, by its name, Python Anywhere, uh, you can jump out there. It is a little bit different because if you look at the price, although uh, you can get a free Heroku, free um, OpenShift, and the, there is free tier stuff available in AWS. Uh, Python Anywhere, really, if you're going to do something that's going to be an actual, you know, any sort of production type, like, you know, even if it's just a few users, you're probably going to have to go to their $12, or I'm sorry, their $5 a month um, subscription plan, which is going to be enough to run your application. You can play around with it. You can, you know, do what you need to, particularly if it's for you know, personal or family use or something where you, it's not a huge number of users, then you can uh, you can run through that. Now, all of these, like I said, they do have examples, uh, they do have tutorials, and I would, I highly recommend that you walk through the tutorial as, as verbatim as possible, and then migrate your, your files over. Uh, and this may even be that you create a whole different uh, Git repository, assuming that you've been using Git along the way, that you use an entirely new Git repository and start putting your files into that and then deploy as you go. Uh, it can be, and it's just sort of heads up, which is why we've bailed out a little bit on how I was working with this for this, uh, this series of videos. It can be somewhat daunting. There are a lot of moving parts, uh, much like anything, if you've dealt with any kind of container situ situations where you're building applications or Docker, uh, Kubernetes, all these kinds of pipelines, all of these great technologies do require that you configure them properly. They're incredibly powerful, but you need to make sure that you cross all your T's and dot all your I's so that all the right libraries get created properly. Uh, they do, you know, the upside is they do tend to have really good logging. I have run into all kinds of situations over the years of, of issues that have come up deploying all of these different types of apps. And uh, across the board, they have really good logs. So take a look at the logs, look at whatever errors come up, and then, you know, move forward from there. Uh, if you want to keep it simple, uh, you can always just you know, use your... Uh, your Django server that you're using, I would turn off the uh, the development mode so it's not kicking out so much information. Uh, make sure that you've got your files protected in a way so that you don't have uh, you know, usernames and passwords that are uh, visible to the outside world. And then uh, you can run it that way. It's not necessarily the the fastest or best solution. But again, if this is personal use or small number of users or something like that, then you know, don't don't get caught up in the configuration side of Python and Django. Instead, just get your application out there, start using it, and then you know, advance it as you need to and enhance it and do the things that are, you know, that make sense for you to turn it into something that you really want to, that you, you're proud of, that you use on a daily basis or, you know, at least a regular basis. Because that's, you know, at the end of the day, for some of this stuff, that's sort of the purpose is let's, Let's build something that solves a problem, and that means every time you face that problem, ideally, that application is the solution that you turn to. So I will, in the show notes, um, I will put links to 
uh, Heroku and Quick Start. Uh, actually, I'm probably looking to the documentation for each of these. Uh, so the Quick Start for uh, OpenShift, the Heroku Django tutorial, the uh, just Python Anywhere. I'll put a link out to there. And then uh, AWS. Um, I'm not sure what they've got. I've got to go back and look because usually I just walk through it using they. They've got a wizard if you go through there to uh, create out that environment, and um, you can sort of run from there. So that being said, I think it's a good time to wrap this one up. Uh, thank you for for your time for walking through all of these tutorials. I uh, apologize if I you know, implied that we we're going to get more of the uh, production side of stuff done than than we have. I uh, apologize for punting a little on that, but it was just one of those, I just, I didn't want to get, I didn't want to muddy the waters with too many configuration related uh, items and, and issues and, uh, it's, you know, just the tedium of loading those libraries and making sure all of them are in place. Uh, I am going to basically right away turn around, although we've got a couple of uh, other videos that we're showing in our, you know, in our regular release schedule on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I am very quickly going to turn around and have been actually itching to turn around and dive into uh, another the next Python series, which will be focused on uh, getting a Python certification. I have not gone all the way through that as far as what's on the syllabus. I'm not sure how much, uh, if any, Django will be, will be involved. Uh, it's definitely going to be uh, heavily Python. So there will be a little bit of uh, uh, repetition, probably. We will go back over things that we've covered in this series. Uh, but it's it's things that we're going to do it as as best possible, in a way that matches what the uh, the certification process is looking for, and the kind of knowledge items that they uh, that they're going to talk about, and uh, that you're going to see you know, assuming you go for in the test. And that goal being that we'll go through that and be able to take a certification and pass it, and you know have, be a certified Python developer as well as just really be by then, I'm guessing really comfortable. Uh, with the Python world. So that's coming up next. Uh, as always, thank you for your time through all of this. Uh, go out there, have yourself a great day, a great week, and we will talk to you next time.